Torah TV. The world is thinking. Um, so we might be seen to somehow be anti-realtor, and we're not. We're not anti-people. The point is that realtors are people, and people respond to incentives, and that's the way it is. And the, the argument we made in our first book was that the, the commission structure as commissioned, a, a, as set up, for realtors doesn't work in the best interest of their, of their, of their clients often. So we did something in the new book that's it's really just a small piece, but we did, you know, I mentioned the, the street prostitution study earlier, and one very interesting feature of that was that it involved popul prostitute populations from different neighborhoods. And, you know, Levitt mentioned earlier when you're looking for kind of accidental experiments or, or differences in differences where you can measure what happens in one place and what happens in another place where they're very similar in some ways but one significant difference. In this case, there were two populations of prostitutes in very similar neighborhoods, very similar clientele, and in one place they had pimps and in the other they didn't. So we set out to measure what you might call the impact of the pimp or pimpact. And, <laughs> and what you want to know is this. Uh, now, first of all, we should say that a lot of the common knowledge about what a pimp does and what a pimp is from movies and so on turned out not to be in evidence from this study. The, the pimps were, you know, if, I won't say the pimps were the good guys at all, but the pimps were um, kind of more conservative figures in this neighborhood who... If you were a prostitute working for them, you experienced higher wages, less violence, less, uh, fewer arrests, and so on. So what we did is we tried to look at, you know, the pimp charges 25%. It's a big cut. What kind of value do they provide? Well, it turns out that prostitutes with pimps made a lot more money and worked a lot fewer hours than the pr prostitutes without pimps, in part because the pimps were essentially marketers, who, this was in, in Chicago, as we mentioned, they would go to the riverboat casinos in Indiana and go downtown in Chicago and basically drum up business and bring back higher paying clients for the prostitutes, which if you think about it, if you're selling a house, it's not so dissimilar from the, from the services you're hoping for your realtor to do is market and present your property in the best light. So then we looked at a study. Now, these, this is not apples and apples. This is apples and oranges, to be sure. We looked at a study where, <laughs> where, uh, where uh, homes were sold in one market in Madison, Wisconsin, by uh, realtors and homes that were sold in Madison, Wisconsin by owners, a very active FISBO or for sale by owner site. And it turned out that the advantage conferred to the homeowners who used a realtor was smaller than the advantage conferred to prostitutes who used a pimp, which is another way of saying that the, the value provided by a pimp in a transaction, if you're, the cust if you're the prostitute, is greater than the value provided by the realtor if you're selling your house. But was the value provided by the realtor equal to the commission? Uh, it, was, it was actually about a wash. You actually paid for... You, you, you sold the house for, the, the amount you sold the house for, basically you lost the commission. So if you wanted to sell the house on your own, you could pocket the agent's commission, but you'd have to do the work for yourself too. So there's a big difference. I mean, if you want to pay 5%, uh, you can do that. If you don't want to pay the 5%, uh, you can sell the house on your own, and there are flat fee agencies, and there's all kinds of different pricing structures that are coming into that market now.